Good morning and thank you for joining us um, for the first of our masterclasses as part of the Startups 2023 programme with Crowdfunder and Smiley Movement. So the purpose of today's session is we're going to be talking all about crowdfunding, how that may be a really exciting opportunity for you and a fundraising platform for your startup campaign. We'll talk through the masterclasses as well that we've got coming up over the next few weeks. And we've been joined by the wonderful Amy Packham, who's the chief editor and head of the Smiley Movement. So the, the Smiley Movement is working in collaboration with Crowdfunder for this year's startups programme. So you'll get to hear all about the wonderful work that they do at Smiley as well. So my name's Zoe and I'm part of the team here at Crowdfunder. The way the session is going to work today is we have some slides and some content to work through, but we also have a Q&A section at the end of our webinar today. So please do feel free to use the chat box, which you should find on the right hand of your screen, to ask any questions about the programme itself or crowdfunding for your startup. And we'll loop back around to those questions towards the end of the session. This whole session is being recorded and you will receive a replay link to this recording as part of a follow up email from ourselves as well. We'll make sure that we share all of the wonderful links to the resources that we have for you to make the most of crowdfunding for your startup into the chat box and also as part of the follow up email as well. If you do find that you have any um, issues with your internet connection, please just do press the refresh button, which should be up by your browser bar. That should bring you straight back into the live room. We've allowed an hour for this session and we've got quite a lot of content to get through. So without further ado, I'll get started. I can see you introducing yourselves, which is brilliant in the chat box. And yes, as I mentioned, this will be recorded, so you will receive a replay link as well. So the Startups Programme for 2023. This is an kind of an intense program of education and resources and knowledge for you guys that are thinking about launching your startup. We're kicking off today with an introduction to crowdfunding and just to kind of give you an overview of the program in its essence. The idea is for you guys to launch your crowdfunding campaign, raise those all important funds that you need to make your project and your startup happen. There's also some really brilliant information, hints and tips that we'll be giving you um, in the form of those masterclasses over the coming weeks as well. If you haven't already, then please do head over to the crowdfunder.co.uk forward slash welcome 2023 link. I will put that into the chat box and start building your page. You can even open that link up whilst we're going through the session and, and start navigating around the different things that we're talking about and start putting those all important bits of information onto your crowdfunding page. You need to launch your crowdfunder ideally before the end of February to take part in this programme. So the programme is aligned with people starting their project at the end of January. Um, however, if you do need a little bit more time in getting that kind of planning process in place and making sure you're creating a really engaging crowdfunding campaign, then you can get that done in February as well. But please do get that launched by the end of February to be in with a chance of potentially winning a thousand pounds towards your business idea. So we have um, a small pot of money to be able to contribute to your startup. So we'll be looking at projects that have got a really um, innovative idea for their business that um, maybe have a really brilliant positive impact on their particular industry or their sector or their community around them. So do think about the, the product or the service that you're thinking about launching and how you can really show us that impact or show us that innovation that you're going to be having as part of that business startup and make sure you're really clear and engaging with that information on your project page as well. So Crowdfunder UK, some of you may be familiar with the concept of crowdfunding in order to raise money for particular projects. You might have seen people do it for personal causes, for example, or for um, community organisations, things that have been happening around you within the community. Crowdfunder UK exists to tackle society's challenges by making ideas happen. The platform was set up around 10 years ago, um, and today we've seen almost £300 million be raised for different projects that have come through the platform. We see around 300 different projects adding to our platform daily, and that can be anything from, as I mentioned, personal causes all the way through to community groups, organisations, charities, 
political campaigns and most importantly business startups as well and business growth. It can work really well as a mechanism for businesses to actually crowdfund for different elements of their business and in and particular startups. The reason being is that we have wonderful programs such as this for you to get involved in, but we're also the UK's leading rewards based platform. We'll go on to rewards in a little bit more detail um, throughout this session, but I just wanted to highlight that wonderful startups program that you're all part of by signing up via our platform. So we have today's masterclass where, as I mentioned, we'll be talking about how to crowdfund for your startup. And then over the coming weeks, we'll be joined by um, industry um, leaders really to talk about the different aspects about uh, different aspects of starting your business. So in the 1st of February, we've got marketing your business, and then we have the been there and done that. So we'll hear from people who've been able to um, raise money for their startup and how that journey was for them, their success stories. And then on the 15th of February, February, we have the making the leap. So, you know, that final kind of push to get you on your way to actually launching and making the most of not only our program and the platform, but all of those wonderful tools to be able to really promote and make the most of your, your business startup as well. So before we get on to the crowdfunding element, it would be wonderful to find out a little bit more about the Smiley Movement. So as I mentioned, we've been, we've been joined today by the wonderful um, Amy Packham. She's gonna be joining us in a few moments to talk about the Smiley Movement, who they are and what they do. But we just have a little introductory video just to play for you to give you a taste of the kind of things that they do. Hello, everyone. So, yes, I'm Amy. I'm the, oh, we've, the slide decks have gone. I'm not sure if people can see the slides there. Um, I'll carry on. Hopefully that'll be sorted. Um, so I'm Amy. I'm the um, chief editor and the head of Smiley Movement. So that sort of gave you an insight into what Smiley Movement is. So you'll probably recognize that smiley face at the top there with the colors round. So the um, Smiley Company was um, created 50 years ago. And like the video showed in 2018, the CEO decided to set up Smiley Movement. And the aim really was to create real smiles in the world. So we have smiley faces on um, clothes on all the accessories you can think of um, but the non-profit arm of the smiley company is about creating real smiles about creating positive impact and positive change so we have a um, multimedia platform um, and like you just saw in the videos our main aim really is to share stories about people and organizations who are doing great things in the world um, we align ourselves with the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. Um, so no poverty, zero hunger. And we're always looking for stories of, um, and this can be businesses, it's often startups, charities, community groups who are really trying to find out um, how they can make the world a better place to live. So um, how do we do it? Like I said, we have a hub, a multimedia hub called smileymovement.org. Um, we write daily positive news stories about good things happening in the world and that can be anything from species who are no longer endangered or a woman in her hometown who decided to set up a food bank um, and has helped people in in her community um we also do smiley talks which are events we gather people around to um basically discuss solutions to some of the issues that we have in our world always taking that approach of trying to find solutions and trying to find um 
how we can impact and make change. Um, and the last thing we do is we run the Charity Film Awards. So every year um, we encourage charities to enter and share their films that they've created. Um, within this, we always have a Corporate Cause Award. So any businesses that have created films that have a um, sort of non-profit element to them. And we have a wonderful big award ceremony in March every year, which is really fantastic. Um, so we're really excited to partner with Crowdfunder for this. Um, within the work that we do, the Smiley News over the past years, we have covered many crowdfunding projects and they have been businesses and organizations and charities. And often they have either they're innovative because they're creating a solution out of a problem that um, people really need. So they're creating that positive impact in the world or they're um, using their business to make an impact by donating some um, profits to charity or they're using their startup idea to help people within their community. So we've massively um, support crowdfunder and this project specifically because it has always been an amazing source of finding organizations and people doing the good in the world for us um so this is just a bit of a summary here we um share stories of people innovating creating change and making an impact and i'm sure many of the startups here will be doing just those things so we're looking forward to hearing more about yours i will pass back to uh zoe now Thank you, Amy. That's really lovely to hear. And it'd be so exciting, won't it, to be able to see all of these wonderful startups coming onto the platform. Yeah. Um, but okay. you'll have okay. eyes, eyes on the platform, I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> through. Would you mind sticking around just for the Q&A at the end in case we get any questions that come through that, that might be relevant for yourself? Absolutely. Yeah, we'll be sticking around. Wonderful. Thank, Thank you. you. We'll see you in a little bit. Thank you. So really exciting to have Smiley on board for this year's programme. Um, Let's talk a little bit about crowdfunding, just to give you guys an overview of the kind of things that are involved in putting together an engaging and successful campaign. Some of you may have experience with crowdfunding before. You may well have even launched your own crowdfunder before. So for those of you that haven't got any kind of concept or the idea, as I mentioned, we are a rewards-based crowdfunding platform. We also partner with many different additional extra funding partners as well. So that's both national and regional. So what we always encourage people to do when coming through the platform is to make sure that you're letting us know who you're going to be working with, the outcomes of your business, your project. You may well actually be partnered with one of our extra funding and partners as well. who may be able to make a pledge onto your project. So even though you might be a profit making organization, do still make sure that you're letting us know all of that important information so that we can potentially match you if we have relevant funds. And we'll talk through a little bit of extra funding in a moment. So I've mentioned rewards a few times. A reward in its essence is being able to give a benefit of some kind in return for a financial contribution. There is a few caveats with that. So with our platform, it, we don't actually give you the ability to offer any shares or anything like that in, in terms of a reward. What we're talking about is maybe a product or a service that you might have that you can offer. We also encourage you to reach out to your networks as well to see if there are things that can be gifted in kind um, to help you along the way, raising money on your crowdfunding page. We do find that those projects that offer rewards can really incentivize their supporters giving. We see that about one in 20 people that come along and view your crowdfunding page will donate some amount of money. And that's normally on average around 20 pounds. If you have rewards on offer, that can rise to around 50 pounds per donation or per pledge. So it's a really brilliant thing to incentivize people's giving. It can also work really well um, from a business point of view because it might be something that you can offer in terms of a pre-sale of a product or a service. You can see if there's an appetite for a particular line of product that you're hoping to launch, for example, or if you know you actually can't put that product into production without a certain an amount of money you're actually already creating a customer base for people claiming that reward and giving their money up front for you to be able to put that product or service into production to be able to deliver it um, at the close of your crowdfunding campaign so think of the rewards as pre-sales as being able to rally your supporters and create that ultimate customer base for going forward and also it's going to build awareness rewards are a really great thing to do 
when you are tasked with going and talking to you know your your local business community about your potential crowdfunding campaign it's a brilliant opener there's more than the financial contribution that people can make to your page they can share information about you and your crowdfunding campaign they could offer to gift you a reward that you can put on your page so all of these are wonderful conversation starters for you to be able to go out there into your community into your network primarily your business network as well and, and see if you can get that additional support from those around you to really help boost your fundraising and also your kind of networking ability. So one previous um, business startup that we saw had some wonderful, wonderful rewards and did incredibly well with their fundraise was the Indie Rock um, South End's first bouldering wall. So these guys were raising money to be able to build a bouldering wall in their local community. And you can see from some of the rewards that they have on here that they've got lots of things that are to do with obviously bouldering, but things like gift cards, things that can be redeemed at a later date once the project is up and running. We give you the ability to set a delivery date on these rewards and just be transparent with your potential customer base. If it's something that you're not going to be able to deliver to them until you have the money to kind of make that product or make that idea happen, just be transparent. I'm still waiting on some rewards that I actually claimed from a business startup um, in early kind of 2021. It sounds ridiculous. But I'm more than happy to wait because I know that actually at the moment they're still looking for their venue. They were part of a, a phased crowdfunding campaign. So until they can actually put that product in production, I'm quite happy kind of sitting here waiting for, for that product. You have the ability as well to communicate with your supporters, communicate with those people that have claimed rewards. And if the goalposts change ever so slightly, if there's um, time frame issues, maybe things are taking longer than you'd hoped for, just to communicate with your supporters and you know more often than not not people are more than happy to kind of support you wait if they need to but just do make sure you communicate with them and we give you all of the abilities to be able to do that as well you can set the limits on your rewards so the amount of a particular reward reward available. You will also set the cost of that reward. We always recommend that you have a really, really good um, varied price point for the different rewards that you have on offer. Some of them might be as simple as a thank you from yourselves. You know, we might be able to send a little video message or a physical postcard or something just to let them know that you're really appreciative of their, their pledge all the way up to things like corporate sponsorship potentially. Is there areas of your business that you'd be happy to have sponsored by an additional local business? Think collaboratively about how you might be able to approach the startup going forward. Um, products and services, as I mentioned, that you can offer as well as those around you that might be able to offer something as a boost to your campaign. We've seen, um, we're based down here in Cornwall, and we quite often see business startups that are going out and approaching the, the local business community, and they might find that they're actually gifted maybe a weekend stay at a, a local um, b and or maybe a meal for two in a local restaurant that they can actually put onto their page as well, just to make those rewards really quite diverse, because you're going to already have your potential customer base and that kind of core market that you're going to be aiming your rewards at but think quite broadly as well about other people that might be visiting your crowdfunder that you'll be pushing out your promotion to a wide network and there might be something that would appeal to them that isn't directly linked to your product or service that is part of your startup campaign so we do encourage you to get out there get talking to people within your network and as i mentioned if people can financially support you brilliant if they can share your crowdfunder campaign as well that's really really important and if they can gift a reward for you to put onto your page that's a really lovely bonus and it it makes them feel as if they're really helping you along the way as well i will share the link to the indie rock crowdfunding page for you to all take a little look at those different rewards and see how they've put that page together it's a really, really lovely page to take a look at, really engaging. We always recommend when you're putting your page together that you use people in images if you can, that you have some video content. So we, we give you the um, ability to put a video at the top of your page. 
All of this is, is part of the program. When you sign up to the link, as I mentioned, it's in the chat box. There's some really lovely guides, um, some hints and tips on how to do all the different stages of putting your crowdfunding campaign together. We've got a brilliant guide on how to make the best video. It doesn't have to be long, just one to two minutes, just a really brief snapshot into who you are, what is your business startup idea? Why are you crowdfunding? Um, how much you need to raise and how people can help you achieve that. If you can put all of that content into a couple of minutes, on location if possible, or um, you talking to camera, people will be invested with the project owners and the people behind the business. If you can, try to shy away from using lots of animation and graphics unless it's really relevant to your business. So people really like to get behind the people involved. We live in a very scroll heavy society at the moment. So you want to captivate that audience really quickly, get all of that information across to them. And you will find that a lot of people will watch the video and maybe make a donation based upon that. You can also use that video content for your social media promotion. So we do highly recommend that you pop a video up there if you have capacity to do so. So in its essence, crowdfunding is reaching out to those around you to financially contribute to your idea to make that idea happen. So there's a few different stages. So first and foremost, you're going to sign up to the crowdfunder platform using the link that I've shared into the chat box. That will take you straight through to the startups program. So you'll be in the right place to get all of the really relevant information for you about the masterclasses, about how to put that engaging page together. You're gonna create a page to tell your story to your audience. So when you're thinking about your audience, you need to think quite clearly about your captive market. So the audience that you're hoping to target in terms of a customer base, those are gonna be your primary core audience. But you also want to think about those that might not already have an idea of who you are or what you're doing. Think quite broadly as well. So you need to go into detail about who you are why you're doing this startup, why there's an impact with what you're creating, what's the positive outcomes, what's this the innovation that you might be bringing to the sector. So think about it as a pitch, if you like, to your potential customer and your potential audience for your business startup. Be as personable as you can, um, as engaging as you can, use lots of visuals, Break up any bodies of text with nice, clear, bold headers as well. Try and think in bite-sized chunks of text information. So nice, bold headers. Pick out any key information in bold. Um, and then also make sure you're breaking up that text with those images. By looking at um, projects such as Indie Rocks page or searching for startups or businesses via our main project, page, our explore page, you'll be able to look at different projects that have come before you, see what resonates with you as a potential supporter and replicate that. Take inspiration from what's come before you. And that's a really good starting point to make sure that what you're putting together is engaging for your potential supporters. It's quite easy sometimes to get in the habit of thinking that people know everything about your, your product or your, your business because you live and breathe it every day. But you need to strip it right back to basics and really explain to people what it is that you're doing, why it's important to the sector and to the people around you, your potential customers, and how crowdfunding, raising the money can help you to achieve that specific goal. You then go on to add a range of rewards that you may be able to offer. I've mentioned a few different types of rewards that you could include. Um, I'm just going to pop into the chat box now. We've got a really lovely um, section of our Knowledge Hub, which is full of amazing information all about rewards and giving you a bit of inspiration of the different types of rewards that you might be able to offer. Again, look at what's come before you within businesses in a similar sector. See if you might be able to offer something along the same lines, something that's maybe specific to you guys. 
Think about exclusivity is a really brilliant hook for a reward. So try not to have huge numbers of things, or maybe it's a one-off line that you might be able to have as a pre-sale. But do think um, cleverly about that psychology of, of sales and making sure that the people claiming those rewards are feeling as if they're getting something quite special for their money and also that they're, they're clearly supporting you um, in some way. So you might price a reward that actually covers a certain um, a certain price of something in order to make that idea happen, whether that's a certain tool or a certain part of the, the business delivery. So again, look at what's come before you, look at the reward guides and see what you might be able to pull together to offer from your business. Once you've got all that up and running, you're going to set your project live. So you'll be generated a, a, a project URL, sorry, a unique project link will be generated for your particular page. You'll be able to go live and then share that live link with those around you. Again, we will teach you how to market that, how to promote that effectively so that you're tapping into your core audience and building it nice and slowly like a ripple effect until you're promoting on social media, speaking to local press and media outlets in order to really push your project to a wider audience. We always recommend that you have a go live date in mind and you stick to that. Give yourself a deadline because it's quite easy to kind of keep pushing that deadline. It's a really wonderful thing to make sure you're being held accountable for actually going live on a particular date so to kind of give you that boost that you need to get all of that planning done beforehand. When you have that go live date in mind, another really brilliant tip is to make sure that you're speaking to those people around you. So your close friends and family, people that are already in support of your wonderful business idea and make sure you can lock in around the first 20 pledges or so. So that when you do go live on that set date, you pick up the phone, you speak to them directly and say, now's the time, please can you make your donation onto my crowdfunding page. Once you have done that and you've seen a few donations come in, ideally either around 10% or around 20 um, individual donations, at that point, that's when you're going to start sharing it with a slightly wider network. Again, that psychology of giving and psychology of sales, nobody wants to be the first person to donate to a crowdfunding campaign. So if you're starting to promote your crowdfunder to a wider audience, when you've already got some donations on there and already got some supporters from your friends and family, people are more likely to get behind you. Please do not start shouting about your crowdfunding campaign to a wide audience on, say, social media or something with no with a zero percent raise and no follow uh, no supporters. Sorry, it won't actually um, do you any favors in the long run. Make sure you've got a little bit of money raised already. You've got a healthy amount of supporters so that you can then go out to people who might not have as much of a connection with you or your business. They can see that your crowdfunding campaigns already got traction. They can see the, uh, that it's credible, that they want to get behind it. And, and that's going to snowball then to help you reach your target. So there are two different ways of raising money on um, the crowdfunder platform. So you need to think again in the planning of your crowdfunding page in your campaign, which of these two methods you would like to go with. The first method is all or nothing. So essentially, when you set your initial target, so that target's going to be the minimum you need to make your project happen, and it needs to be a nice realistic target as well. So think about how many people uh, may well be within your network that you can speak to, talk to, drum up those donations from. So the all or nothing method, if you do not hit 100% of your target by the close of your crowdfunding date, then all of the money raised gets refunded to your supporters and any additional extra funding money that you might have um, received approval for and a pledge has been put onto your page will also be refunded to the extra funding partners. It sounds terrifying and people often question why anybody would want to choose this particular funding method. It does have its strengths, so it can work really well to keep up momentum for yourself and the crowd. It gives a brilliant sense of urgency, not only to you as project owners, because you really do need to hit that target, um, but also to your crowd. It's going to dictate that kind of narrative that you go out to your supporters with. 
The other way in which it can work um, is if you have a particular piece of equipment, for example, that you need to buy in order to get your particular startup off the ground. Let's say that costs £5,000. If you don't raise £5,000, you can't buy that piece of equipment. You can't actually launch the startup. So think about the types of things that you're raising money for. If you can make use of any money raised, so if you'd be able to put that money towards a bit more um, R&D or it's actually a service which, you know, you can get things off the ground with with slightly less than maybe your, your initial target, then think about the flexible funding method. In this instance, you will keep what you raise from your crowd, even if you don't hit 100% of your target by the close of your crowdfunding campaign. The caveat with that is if you have been approved for extra funding, so from one of our extra funding partners, and that pledge has landed on your page throughout the course of the live crowdfunder, you may well find that that gets refunded to the extra funding partner if you do not hit your target. You would need to check the T's and C's and the pledge criteria of the specific fund. Some of our funding partners, however, will still insist that you reach 100% of your target. We will do everything from our side to make sure you've got all of the information and all of the resources to be successful and hit 100% of that target. But it just is up to you to decide which one of these funding methods suits your startup best. There are lots of additional benefits to crowdfunding along with the financial raise. So for those of you here today, it may well be that actually you just want to test the water and you want to see if there's an appetite for your particular startup. It's a really brilliant way of doing that without having to have it financed from the traditional sources of, of financing. So business loans and those kind of things. It's quite a low risk way of finding out if there is a customer base and there is an appetite for your crowdfunding campaign. If if there isn't, worst case scenario, you've lost nothing. You've put no money um, into the crowdfunding campaign. There are no fees attached if you don't raise any money at all, for example. However, we are here to support you all of the way to hopefully um, making sure that the, the crowdfunder that you're launching is one of those wonderful crowdfunders that is innovative, that has that positive impact, that there really is an appetite for. So it's a great way to validate your idea. It's gonna build confidence for yourselves in your own idea. You'll start to see that actually there is a buzz being formed um, in your local community and your network around this wonderful startup that you're bringing into the sector. So it can really help to validate your own idea. It's gonna build awareness as well. So just by putting your ideas out there, you may well be having conversations with people around you about your potential startup, but by putting it all centralized on a crowdfunding page that you can share with people, which is a really a shop window into you as a business, who you are and what you're doing and what your intentions are for your startups, it can really create awareness and that will build that buzz around your idea and around your business and potentially get noticed by a wider audience as well. You know, you're being, um, your crowdfunder page is on a, a massive platform. You know, as I mentioned, over 300 projects a day are added. So you've got the capacity there to really make use of the fact that your centralized project page is being held within um, a UK recognized website. You can make sure that you're tagging people like the Smiley Movement and Crowdfunder UK in all of your promotion in the hope that that gets picked up and that um, with that traction and you may well get retweets and all of those wonderful things that come with really putting your idea out there and building that awareness around what you're doing. Everybody that supports your project page will automatically become an advocate of yours. All of your supporters will go on to talk to their networks about this wonderful startup campaign that they've, they've contributed to. It will help to build an engaged audience. Again, your supporters will be with you for the duration of your crowdfunding journey. They'll want to know how the business is doing, how it's coming along, you know, the launch dates when you're able to put those products um, out there into the world or those services. And you'll create meaningful connections as well with your local business community, with those that are promoting on your behalf and, of course, your supporters. We always recommend that you keep in touch with your supporters so you can post updates to your page, which is a really brilliant way to keep in touch with them because automatically 
any updates that are posted will get emailed out to people that have supported your campaign so far. So you can keep them in the loop with any exciting things that are happening outside of the crowdfunder and any milestones that you're hitting within the crowdfunder. Use it as a way to thank them for their contributions so far. So it's a really brilliant way to keep um, that lovely captive audience your future customer base all in one place and then at the end of the crowdfunding campaign you'll be able to download your supporter details and you might want to use that to collate a newsletter or something along those lines again we always recommend with updates that you carry on posting onto your project page even after the crowdfunder has closed because those people that have supported you throughout the campaign will really want to know when, you know, when things are coming to fruition, how are you getting on with the project? Were you able to get that venue? When are you launching? All those wonderful, exciting things that are happening, your supporters will want to be a part of that as well. Think of them as, as part of um, the whole process. They're coming along for the ride with you as well. And ultimately, they may well be your customer base going forward. You'll learn new skills. So for some of you, you may already be quite well versed with things like social media promotion or networking. And um, some of you, it may be completely new to you. We have all of the resources to be able to get you crowdfunding like a pro. And these are all really, really transferable skills as well. So creating engaging content that resonates with uh, people around you, making sure you can really sell yourself and sell your business and promote yourself well, networking, effectively creating things like network maps to make sure you are actually engaging with different areas of your network effectively, putting yourself out there in front of others to talk about who you are and what you do can be quite challenging, um, but we will give you all of the confidence, all of the tools that you need to be able to do that effectively. I mentioned as well the extra funding opportunities. So there's over £10 million worth of extra funding available on the Crowdfunder UK platform. We work with over 70 national and regional partners that could be from local authorities all the way through to huge corporations such as Aviva, British Airways, M&S. So by looking at the extra funding page, which is part of our website, I'll just pop that into the chat box for you. You can have a look and see if there might be some additional extra funding opportunities available to you and your business startup. It's a really great way to boost your fundraising and it can be a lovely um, thing to go out to your supporters with as well and say, you know, we're also being backed by the wonderful funding partner um, who are going to contribute to our fundra uh, fundraiser, our campaign as well. So do take a look and explore that and see if you may well be eligible for some additional funding too. There are fees attached with crowdfunding. For everybody that's part of the Startups Programme, there will be a 0% platform fee. So normally, for-profit businesses are charged a platform fee. However, as for taking part in this particular programme, it will be a 0% fee for you guys, um, as long as you're part of the, the Startups 2023 programme. And there are some T's and C's that you need to be aware of. So I'll, again, I'll put that into the chat box. So just take a little look through those, make sure that you can um, work within the terms and conditions of being part of the startup campaign. But it does mean that there won't be any platform fees attached to your startup campaign, which is wonderful. And then there's also for every single crowdfunder that comes through the platform, there are some transaction fees attached. We work with a third party provider. So all of those donations and pledges that are being made to your crowdfunding page will all go through Stripe, which is our third party provider. They charge a transaction fee for each of those um, card payments. All of the fees that you may well be charged as part of setting up and running your crowdfunding campaign will only ever be deducted from the total raised at the close of your successful campaign. So depending on those two structures that we talked about, once your crowdfunding campaign closes, you will receive a payout within around seven days of all of the money raised from your crowdfunding campaign, from your crowd, minus any fees attached. So those transaction fees will come off your total raise at that point and you'll receive that payout of your money minus fees. There are um, fees attached to extra funding. Again, you'd need to look at each of those individual funds to check what those are, but generally it's around 5% plus VAT. So do be mindful again of that when it comes to those payouts that it would be minus any potential fees if you've been um, 
eligible and approved for the extra funding. Extra funding is paid out separately. There's uh, a few more steps of due diligence that you need to go through um, in order to receive that extra funding payout. All of that is part of the process of uh, the campaign admin, the crowdfunder admin. So you'll be walked through all of those different stages as well. Do make sure when you're setting your target that you think about any of those additional costs, so potential fees, or if there's any costs attached to delivering any of those rewards, it might be that you are thinking of physically delivering things to people that will come at a maybe a, a postage cost. You can attach that to the reward, or you can also think about absorbing those fees or those added costs into your target. So when you're planning your initial target, think about the minimum that you would need to raise to make the project happen. Think about what is a realistic amount as well, dependent on the size of audience that you might be able to target. Thinking about that one in 20 people donating to your page that view your page. But then also think about potentially adding on a few percent, maybe five or seven percent to that number, just to absorb any of those additional costs that might pop up, including any of those transaction fees as well. So we have three steps to success when it comes to crowdfunding. These are all covered in our wonderful Learn platform. So not only do you have access to the Startups programme, you will also have access to our online learning guides. There's four modules in these guides. I highly recommend you take a look at them. I put the link into the chat box. The first is an introduction to crowdfunding, just getting you up to speed with the whole concept. And then you have planning your project, creating your project and running your project. By the time you've worked your way through these three modules, you'll have all of the information you need to put together a really engaging and successful campaign. So I highly recommend that you do it. If it's a, a really user friendly platform, lots of kind of short videos, multiple choice questions. It's something that you can sign into and encourage those that are potentially helping you with your business or other team members to do so as well so that you're all on the same page. We always recommend wherever possible, if you can get a group of people around you to help with the crowdfunding campaign to do so. If you're a sole trader, um, you might want to reach out to friends or family that you can lean upon, but it's a great way to gain feedback. You might have some um, skill set within your team that you can delegate certain tasks to, whether that's creating social media content, for example, or you know putting the page together or going out and sourcing rewards or thinking about those wonderful uh, rewards that you might be able to put onto your page. So do make sure that you're speaking to those around you, rallying a little team around you as well in order to make the whole process that much easier for yourself. One of the tasks that you will be asked to do as part of the Learn platform is a really vital part of your crowdfunding campaign. You will come back to this network map time and time again. What you need to do in whichever way works best for you. We see um, projects have great big sheets of paper stuck to their kitchen walls with all of the names of people, lots of post-it notes, colour coordinated, or maybe an Excel spreadsheet. Whatever works for you and the way in which you can work then best make sure that you are writing down every single person that you can think of within these different areas of your network. So you're going to start with those that are really close to you. So it's going to be friends and family, team members and get them to do the same. So the team members, friends and family as well. And then beyond that, your slightly wider network, you're going to be looking at existing supporters. So who do you have that you communicate with already about your business? Who's already in support of you? Do you have an existing customer base from um, a separate branch of the business or from you know, a different walk of life that you might be able to bring over into your network that will support this business venture? Any partners? So when we're talking about partners in business, that might be suppliers, that might be a venue, that might be other businesses or collaborative organizations that you've been piggybacking you know, and working together with. You're also going to think about your social media platforms. So we've just mentioned Facebook here, but obviously there's there's lots of different social media platforms you can use. Use the ones that you already have um, good engagement with. If you've not already set up social media platforms specifically for your startup, we encourage you to do so as part of the planning process. It's much um, better to be able to centralize all of that promotion to a business specific 
social media page rather than your own personal pages if you can if you can do that that's a really good thing to do you'll want that going forward anyway but if you're a really visual business and you normally use something like instagram to communicate with your audience then that might be the way forward for you but think about being active on all of the different media social media platforms if you can you're also going to look at your local business community. Are there any networking events going on locally? Can you get out and speak to the local businesses? Make sure that you can rally their support as well for your particular startup. Think about local people. So again, networking events that might be coming up. Is there anything that you can be doing to bring people together in order to engage with the local community? And finally, press and blogs as well. As part of the planning, we always recommend that you start talking to your local radio station, your local newspaper, letting them know what you're doing and what's coming. The fact that you're part of this program, you're launching this really exciting crowdfunding campaign. You're obviously local to the area. There's a real need for whatever it is that you're bringing within the marketplace and um, have those conversations early on but you don't actually want them to be doing any promotion for you until you are over halfway towards your target. That's kind of the last hurrah when it comes to that promotional push. You also want to be able to spoon feed them all of the, the relevant information and we'll show you how to write an engaging press release to make sure that you yield the best results from those local media outlets. You're more likely to have them put something on their socials, shout about you on the local radio or put something in print if you can give them all of the information they need as opposed to i'm crowdfunding please come and look at my campaign and write something about it you know create a press release give them all of that information and then then they will hopefully be able to do something with that on your behalf when the time is right so this is just an example of your network spreadsheet if you so choose to do it in this way so for each of the different sections you're going to write down everybody that you know of their contact details, how you're gonna contact them, okay? So if you would normally pick up the phone and speak to somebody, please continue to do that. If you'd normally have a face-to-face -face conversation, you know, talk to them directly. Please do avoid things like blanket emails. You want to be as personable as possible. So if you are emailing people, wherever you can get personal contact information, um, send a personal email. Blanket emails tend to, either get ignored or potentially fall into somebody's spam or junk folder. So just remember that although you're a business, you are also a person behind the business wanting to connect with other people in order to then back you. So when you're creating a page, as some of you may have gone on to the building your crowdfunding page section of the program already, you'll see that there's a few different areas that you will need to fill out in order to, to create that page. So you need to let us know about you. So the type of business that you are, whereabouts in the country you are, your project basics. So things like the title, make sure that's really snappy and really relevant to your project. That will help create the project URL. However, you can edit that. If it, if it reads in a way that actually you'd like it to say something else that, that is more relevant to your project, you can edit that last little bit. Do make sure that the, the link does have real relevance, though, with your particular project so that when people take one look at it, they know exactly what it's for, what it's about. They're going to click through and come through to your page. When it comes to your project page itself, as I've mentioned earlier, you really want to make that as engaging as possible. And there's loads of really brilliant examples on our platform as well. We'll include a couple of examples in the follow up email, but there's lots that are on the startups program pages as well for you to take a look at. So please do take a look at those, take inspiration from them. Think about being as visual as you can be. Think about bite-sized pieces of information, but do go into detail. Let people know exactly who you are and what you're doing. If you know that you've got lots of data or lots of additional information that's held on something like a website, for example, for your business, then by all means, put a hyperlink to that website so that people can click on that and look at that in their own time. Try not to kind of um, overwhelm the reader with lots and lots and lots of content and lots of additional kind of data and things like that when they can actually find that information elsewhere if they would like to read a little bit more around the subject and look more into your business startup. And then when it comes to the extra funding, 
you will have a section within your uh, within putting your page together which is all about that extra funding so do make sure that you've in the first instance given us your postcode we need to know whereabouts in the country you are just so that we can match you with those regional funding partners if applicable you'll see here on this little screenshot that there is a, a tick box that you will need to pop a little tick in and select to allow us to share your details with our extra funding partners. So by your details, we're primarily talking about where you are, your type of business, um, what you're hoping to achieve, and of course your crowdfunding page as well. They may well look at your page when it comes to the decision-making process. So when it comes to applying for the extra funding, do that at a stage when you're really happy with what's on your page, that you know your crowdfunding page sells your, your business and tells your story really effectively. You will then let us know who's likely to benefit from your project, so your primary demographic, what your customer base is, and then what the potential outcomes of your business is as well. Lots of tick boxes for you to take a look at. Um, Think as well about the ripple effect of your business. You'll, you'll have the initial goal and that initial customer base and how that your product is going to or service is going to benefit those. Is there a knock on effect to that? Is there a growth effect? So by putting your business into the market, are you going to be able to long term potentially provide employment? Things like that. So think quite broadly um, that will help to partner you up and match you with that up with any of those potential extra funding partners the next step would be to take a look at each of those funds make sure you look at the eligibility criteria, the terms and conditions in detail and if you do think it's a good fit by all means put in those applications it's around a 10 to 15 minute application process for each so you may well consider having your answers on a google doc or a word document or something that you can copy and paste over into those application forms you can receive pots of money from multiple funding partners so you don't have to choose just one if you've been matched with a few different funding partners you think you're a good fit for all then please do make sure that you put in multiple applications as well it could just well be the, the boost that you need for your fundraising to help you on your way this is a brief overview of a crowdfunding campaign so the optimum time for running a campaign, having a live crowdfunder, is around four weeks. Four to five weeks is kind of, you know, optimum. Anything above that or longer than that, you might find that actually there it becomes stagnant in the middle of the crowdfunding campaign, purely because you need to keep up that momentum and you need to keep that promotion varied throughout those four to five weeks. You will find that people get excited about your crowdfunding campaign at the beginning there may well be a little bit of a lull in the middle and then it will ramp up towards the end as you're coming to the close of your your live crowdfunder so you do need to make sure that you've got a really clear um, plan of activity and promotion in order to combat that that potential lull in the middle you can do that in lots of different ways. Um, we'll give you lots of advice and hints on how to do that, but making sure that you've got very content already um, in mind to, to schedule, that you've got some a lovely stock of images, potentially video content that you can roll out. And also you might have some rewards that you've held back that you can actually add on to your live campaign in order to bring people back to the page to take a look at these wonderful new exciting rewards that you've got. And you'll obviously shout about that in your promotion as well. But when it comes to the um, time frame of promotion, as I mentioned, you're going to lock in those pledges ahead of going live from those kind of friends and family and team members. As soon as you launch on that first day, you're going to head back out to them, going to contact them and get them to put those donations onto your page. At that point, when you have a little bit of money raised, you're going to head out to maybe your slightly wider group of friends, your slightly wider family network or the teens, friends and family, for example, to bring a slightly um, more supporter numbers onto the page. Think about building it quite slowly. You want to have amassed a nice amount of support before you move on to the next group. So once you have a nice amount of donations from those close to you that will support you and your idea, you're gonna reach out to those existing customers. So that might be, um, from, as I mentioned, if you've got, you might have a, a different business branch or arm that you've been running. It could be people that you've already spoken to about this particular startup idea that are already potentially invested in your idea. You're going to reach out to those. 
once you've amassed some donations from there, you're going to look at your partners. So we talked about suppliers of venues, collaborative organizations or businesses, reach out to them. Beyond that point, it's going to be a social media promotion, really. And that's you're going to be looking at social media around 40 percent raised. So maybe you're almost halfway there. That's when you're going to really shout about it on socials. Make sure you're tagging in any other businesses that have supported you. Crowdfunder UK, the Smiley movement, just so um, you can kind of land within the radars of those different organisations as well. And hopefully we'll be able to pick those up on your behalf if you're getting lots of um, activity with your social promotions. Think about those networking events in terms of local businesses and local people. And then finally, at around 60% raised is when you really want those local press um, and uh, media outlets to shout about you. You can also contact people you know, who are blogging about similar things to, to your business. A really brilliant tool for these kind of things is using Facebook to find a wider audience. So you can always reach out um, in Facebook. For example, you can type in keywords to do with your business and you can search for groups. That will bring up anybody that has a Facebook group to do with that particular content. It's a really brilliant way to then approach admin and see if you can promote via those Facebook groups, see what's happening in your local area as well. And again, see about that appetite for your particular business idea. And then when it comes to things like blogs, press, radio, use a search engine such as Google. Again, type in those keywords to do with your business startup idea. But this time you're going to be searching via news. So if you search for news that will bring up um, any blogger, any radio station, any newspaper that's writing about things or has maybe done an interview with somebody that's got a similar idea or talking about similar subject matter to your, your business startup and what you're hoping to kind of tackle and what your impact is going to be. And that's going to be your lead in to be able to approach those people. So you want to do that as part of the planning stage and you want to queue them up ready for around a 60% raise in your target to then be able to go back to them and say, now's the time. We're doing really well. Please, can you shout about it so we can bring in more people to get us over the line? There's loads of learning and support available to you. We have obviously the, the webinars and the masterclasses that we'll be running over the coming weeks specifically aimed at helping you with your business startup. On top of that, we also have drop-in sessions each week. So if you have a question that crops up outside of those times, you need it answering kind of straight away, by all means pop along to one of our generic drop-in sessions as well. Those are all hosted via Zoom each week. We have the online learning and guides. So I've shared the learning platform into the chat box for you. We also have a wonderful wealth of information as part of our knowledge hub. You will find within the startups program that we will make sure that we're giving you the relevant um, information from the knowledge hub for each stage of your crowdfunding campaign. If you want to take a look at what else is available to you, I've put the link in there so you can have a look at the knowledge hub in its entirety, see if you can get some information that might be uh, of help to you there. We've also got some wonderful tailored email advice. So obviously coming through to the platform as part of the startups program, we will make sure that the emails that you receive are signposting you to the relevant resources and information to maximize your crowdfunding journey and make the most of this experience so that you can have a really successful crowdfunding campaign. We have the help center as well. So our help center is full of wonderful um, FAQ guides and um, troubleshooting guides for every stage of your crowdfunding campaign. You just need to search via keywords and you'll get a whole different list of FAQs that will come up to help you with any of those potential technical hurdles or things that you might be facing. If you can't find the answer there, then please do get in touch with our customer support team. Um, it's a small team down here in Cornwall. It's a really dedicated team. They're incredibly knowledgeable about everything Crowdfunder. So do get in touch with them if you struggle to find the answers, either from a drop-in or the help center. And then finally, we have a live project dashboard as well. So when you're setting up your crowdfunding campaign, you will have um, a dashboard which you can manage every single aspect of your campaign through. So you'll be able to apply for extra funding, post those all important updates to your supporters, see which rewards have been claimed, add rewards if you need to. You'll have access, access to your, your supporter list depending on the, the, or the fundraising structure you've chosen. Some you'll be able to access all the way through the campaign, 
Others you won't be able to access until after you close for GDPR reasons, depending on whether you're all or nothing or keep what you raise. Um, but once you've closed your campaign as well, you'll be able to have access to download those details, create a newsletter, um, keep in contact with all of those wonderful supporters. So a really brilliant way of seeing how your crowdfunding campaign is doing as well. You'll have um, the dashboard analytics. You'll be able to see uh, on what days your donations are coming in. So you'll be able to compare that to the promotion that you've been doing and see what works. We'll let you know what we think you will be trending towards in terms of the amount raised based on your previous activity to date. So it's a really brilliant thing to keep engaged and keep on top of so you know how your crowdfunding campaign is performing and how you can be reactive to that throughout the course of the live campaign as well. This is just a quick snapshot of that Learn platform that I mentioned. So nice, highly visual, really user friendly. It's definitely one of the next steps for you guys, as well as engaging with all of the content that we'll be um, sending out to you to do with the startups program. If you can sign up to the Learn platform and work your way through that, what will really help you to have all of that background knowledge just to make sure you can make the most of this experience. And then finally, don't forget that you could be in with a chance of winning an additional £1,000 towards your startup idea. So we'll be looking for three new businesses um, that are showing us innovation or impact within a wider community. So that lovely positive impact that um, Amy was mentioning earlier. So that could be something where you are seeing that there's a real need for something in the marketplace that actually is tackling a problem or that the positive impact of your particular business and what you're going to be doing if there's a, a not-for-profit aspect to it or the giving back and paying it forward aspect. So do make sure that you are really highlighting that on your project pages so that we can see and the Smiley Movement can see as well just how innovative, how impactful and how important your startup is going to be um, to really disrupt the marketplace going forward. Okay, so that was a bit of a whistle-stop tour of crowdfunding. Hopefully that's all given you some food for thought with your particular campaigns and given you some ideas of how to start putting those together, the types of things that we would like to see on those pages as well. Um, we have got a little bit of time left, so I would love to welcome back um, Amy to the screen and see if we have any questions Thanks. that have come through. Hi, Amy, thank you for waiting. Okay. I'm just going to take a quick look through the chat box and see if we've had anything come through. We've got a few questions. Okay. Bear with me. So we've got somebody asking about potential tips for not being on screen. So it's always this can always be a bit of a, a hurdle for project owners, whether it's in profit making businesses or community organizations is that hurdle of putting themselves in front of a camera and talking about what they do, who they are and what they do. So do you have any hints and tips, Amy, from your perspective? Because obviously you deal with um, wonderful businesses and their stories all of the time. Is there any hints and tips you might give them about either breaking down that barrier or maybe a, a kind of a go around if there is one in order to, to be able to put together an engaging video? Yeah, I think, like you said, Zoe, being personable is really important to try and get um, engagement from your audience. What I would say, I think there's a few options. If you really do not want to be on screen, um, you could use a voiceover so you could film what you want to. You could film the aspects of your of your video that will help you um, project your um, and show what your project is and potentially use a voiceover so they can hear you and get that personal aspect. Um, I think another way, if you could potentially overcome the hurdle, is to just say, I really don't like being in front of the camera, but I think I've got a really good idea, so I'm gonna tell you about it. And just acknowledge that, because not a lot of people like being in front of the camera. Some people do, but um, I think acknowledging that could sort of break down some barriers in themselves by, even and you could be on camera just for a five seconds and the rest of the video could be footage of what you want to do or stock footage or images and um, captions um so that's another way the one final way is what i just mentioned is doing a video with images or moving images or videos and captions so writing it there i think if you can persuade yourself to be in front of the camera or even use a voiceover then it will really pay off <laughs> I think that's really good advice. And I think if you can as well, if you've got people around you that you can kind of 
do it together make it a fun thing to do you know it doesn't have to be highly polished it doesn't need to be overly edited you know people want to be able to resonate with the human the character behind the project so if that means that you're kind of bearing all and saying yeah this isn't this is really uncomfortable for me but I love what I'm doing and I want you to get behind me I think that'd be a really lovely thing to do but there are there are go-arounds like you say or somebody you know representing the business on your behalf but I think if you could potentially try and see the fun in it and try and kind of put yourself out there where possible I think would be the best approach um okay so a question in from joy my project will be hyper local to start is crowdfunding appropriate i would say yes i'd say crowdfunding um is appropriate in 99.9 cases um if it's hyper local one of the benefits of that is it it gives you a real opportunity if it's something that is going to really resonate with your local community then you've potentially got a really great captive group of supporters because there's obviously a real need for for whatever it is that you're going to deliver locally so that's going to be your core audience your core customer base um, and then you can still build on that it can still be pushed out to a wider audience that might not necessarily benefit in the first instance but they can see the need for it they can see that actually what you're doing will have that positive impact even if it is really localized um, they may still get behind it as a great idea, even if it doesn't directly benefit them from a wider audience point of view. So I would say absolutely go for it. Use it as a plus. Be able to really connect with that local community and get them all on board behind you. Just think maybe realistically about how big that audience is and in terms of targets and things. Um, make sure that you're setting something that's quite realistic, but obviously it needs to be enough to make you um, get your project off the ground. Would you agree with that, Amy? Yeah, and I would say I feel like since COVID, a lot of people have been really focused on their communities and the local area and wanting to support the local area and local businesses, even if it doesn't necessarily impact them. So I would definitely agree that it's it's something that should move forward. And out of the crowdfunding projects we've covered in the past, a lot of them are really local and then they do expand. Um, but they start off with that small community and getting people locally on board. Um, I feel like since COVID, that sort of support really is there. Yeah. Perfect. And I think that leads really nicely, actually, onto our next question, which is what is the current public appetite to crowdfunding in light of the current cost of living crisis? Um, what is the success rate over the last six months? So in terms of I can't really give you the data over the last six months, but what we have seen is actually just like Amy was saying, even over the last couple of years and now even in the thick of a cost of living crisis, people are really turning towards supporting local. So whether that might be local charities, local community groups or local businesses, people are actually spending their money more wisely. And we are seeing on our platform that it hasn't affected people's giving. If anything, people are giving more towards getting things off the ground that are really impactful for those around them, for their community. Or, you know, there's been lots of huge pushes recently for moving away from spending money with large corporations and spending on the high street or spending on, you know, not on the high street online retailers and things like that. So from our side, we've seen that it hasn't negatively impacted um, people giving and people contributing to crowdfunding campaigns at all. Um, I don't know in terms of the businesses that you've seen coming through in the marketplace, Amy, from the smiley movement side of things. I think it's exactly what you said, that it's about people are, people are spending money, but they're spending it more wisely and they're thinking about what they're spending it on. So if your startup idea, if you think it's a really good niche idea and you people want to know about it, the chances are there are people that believe in it too. So I think it's having that belief in your idea as well and knowing that there'll be people out there that will, I think, feel the same. Yeah, definitely. Um, a question in here from Derek, can you raise more than your target? Absolutely. So we do, as I've mentioned about setting the minimum that you might need to get that kind of project or that idea, that business off the ground. We do also have something called a stretch target, which allows you to overfund your project. So let's go back to saying you needed that £5,000 for that piece of equipment. You've raised the £5,000. You've had some wonderful support from those around you. You still have some time left on your crowdfunding campaign. So you still maybe have a couple of weeks of a live crowdfunder. You can set something called a stretch target. 
And you can do that at any point during your crowdfunding journey. And what that will do is allow you to have an additional milestone in place, an additional goal for your supporters to aim for. So let's say you needed that piece of equipment at £5,000, but actually if you raise £10,000 in total, you'd be able to buy this additional kind of all bells wish list kind of piece of equipment that would just enhance the whole business. So you would set your stretch target for 10,000. Um, as soon as you were to achieve the 5,000 pound target, your stretch target would come into play. It would be really visible on your page. The new goal would be the new target to raise and you could rally your supporters to reach that new goal as well. So you can always overfund. You can also move that stretch target so you can increase it if you if you so wish, if you're doing exceptionally well as well. So yes, you absolutely can overfund your project. Um, okay, so questions from Linda. How long do you have to access the information? So in terms of the Startups Programme, that is running um, over the next few weeks to get you all launched between kind of January, ideally, end of January and the end of February as well. So all of the Startups 2023 information that you'll be receiving will be over the next few months. In terms of the additional support that we offer generally as part of our crowdfunder platform, that can be accessed at any time. So that's things like the Knowledge Hub that I mentioned, the Learn platform as well. Um, but I do encourage you to make use of what's available now and get that, if you can and you have the capacity, get that um, crowdfunding campaign launched within the time frame um, because it's a really, really lovely program to be a part of with all of the masterclasses and of course, the opportunity to potentially receive an additional thousand pounds towards your crowdfunding campaign as well. Okay, um, just bear with me one second. Um, just a few questions about the difference between all or nothing and flexible funding. I have put a link to that into the chat box. It's part of the help center. I can include a guide into that as well, into the follow-up email, just so you can kind of read around that in your own time. It's definitely worth having a bit of planning around those two different fundraising mechanisms, but also it's part of the Learn platform. So once you've worked your way through that, you should be really clued up on what suits you best. Um, bear with me two seconds. Okay, so another question. Do our participants have to pay the transaction fees? So I'm guessing by participants, you're meaning supporters. So essentially, when somebody makes a donation to your page, the transaction fee will be deducted from the overall amount that they donate. So if somebody donates £20 to your crowdfunder, that will be held within um, Stripe, our third party provider. So that will be held in, in kind of a virtual bank, if you like, until you close your crowdfunder successfully. And at that point, the transaction fees will be removed from that £20. So all your supporters will see is the £20 transaction and the fact that they've donated that £20 to your crowdfunder. And at the point of completion of a successful crowdfunding campaign, the transaction fees will be removed from your overall total raised and you will receive any money raised minus those fees. So they won't be charged a transaction fee on top of their donation. It's all part and parcel of that donation amount. Um, this one for you, Amy, is there a cost of working with the Smiley Movement? No, there's no cost. So we're a non-profit and any editorial features we write or anything we put across um, our YouTube or social media, it's because we genuinely feel like it's a good idea. It's bringing positivity to the world. It has a positive impact. It's innovative. So specifically with Crowdfunder, we're going to be looking for ideas that do have, like I've said, they these startups that are going to make change in some way that are solving a problem that are solution to things that will benefit people or the planet in some way. So no, there's no cost involved. Amazing. That's very exciting news. And there's a few more questions coming in about fees. So I'm going to pop, drop a link into the chat box just regarding the fee structure, because in terms of the percentages, it will be a percentage of the donation made plus VAT. So it's quite difficult to break down without knowing exactly what donations are coming into your page, but that will give you a good overview of how to maybe make a bit of a, a guesstimation based on what you're hoping to raise as a target. Um, I just wanna quickly check to see if we've got anything 
that we can cover off. I'm conscious of time. We've run over a little bit, but we've had some really brilliant questions and some great content. So I don't want to miss any of the important ones. If I don't get around to all of the questions, we will make sure to to kind of um, answer those ones in the follow up as well, just so we don't want to miss anybody's questions out. OK, uh, bear with me two seconds. OK, so we have one. This is an interesting one from Chris. What is the typical rate of funding raised through people browsing on the crowdfunder platform versus external marketing, as you mentioned, through your own network, i.e. social media, etc.? It's a bit of a slight misconception that there is a group of people that kind of hover around the crowdfunder platform looking for interesting projects to support. There may be a few. We don't know of a huge group of them, though. So the the whole idea of crowdfunding is putting that promotion into your hands as project owners. You need to make sure that you are marketing your your startup you're pushing your crowdfunding campaign and promoting it to your networks um, and building as i mentioned into those wider networks through all of the resources that we give you the more that you could that you can do that effectively the more people will come to your page the more donations and the more pledges you'll receive on your crowdfunding campaign so really my advice to you would be to to discount the idea that there might be people that just kind of come to your page to, to check it out. There might be a few based on the promotion that obviously Crowdfunder UK are going to do about the wonderful startups program. People might come and check it out and be able to have a look at a couple of the projects. But ultimately, you as project owners will be responsible for promoting your crowdfunding campaign effectively to then bring people onto your crowdfunding page in order to leave a financial contribution. And like Amy said, um, in terms of the smiley movement, you'll be keeping an eye out for some really interesting businesses coming through. But the same, I guess, will be true from your point of view, that it's going to really come down to those projects promoting their own crowdfunding campaigns. Definitely. And like like Zoe said, tagging us on social media so we can see those projects makes it easier. <laughs> Amazing. Thank you. Well, I think what we'll do for now, um, as we have run um, over, as I mentioned, is we'll wrap it up for today. I will make sure I take a note of these questions and I'll answer any of those additional questions in that follow up email. But thank you so much, Amy, for joining us today. Some really wonderful, wonderful, um, inspirational ideas <laughs> from you and some really great advice as well. So hopefully people will embrace that, make the most of this programme and obviously tag you guys and fall onto your radar to see what you could be shouting about on their behalf as well. Hopefully we'll see some really yeah. interesting businesses <laughs> come through yeah. the platform. Tag away. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Thank you so much. And um, good luck, everybody. Make sure you head over and start building your crowdfunding pages. Make use of all of those resources and keep an eye out for that email coming your way soon. Thank you very much. Thank you.